our travel series offers the high quality content of biodiversity, tourism, and cultural assets of Sabah that will surely amaze, immerse, inspire, and connect. This show will be fueled by emotionally engaging stories from travelers, conservationists, and planners in the quest for responsible and sustainable tourism and explore the new normal travel lifestyle. My name is Alex. And I am Samantha. And we will bring you to discover, indulge, and show you why Sabah, the land below the wind, is your dream travel destination. Our city, or most city around the world, challenged by the pandemic crisis, deal with travel movement restriction. Here in Sabah, we will explore that question and solution. Hi. You're Ken? You must be Alex. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to be your local guide uh, for today. Uh, today I'll be guiding you through some heritage walk. Yeah? Okay. At the moment we are in Jesselton Point. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about Jesselton Point? Actually, this is the beginning of the whole township. Yeah. Oh. Because uh, for for most of the uh, merchant or colonial, as you can see here, there's a lot of sheep. Yeah. Right. I will show you a little bit in front. Oh. Okay. Just mind your step. Yeah. All right. Why Jesselton Point? Why did it start here? Cross Point for the merchants, yeah? Oh. Voyagers to unload their goods or to load their goods. Behind me is a photo of Sir William Good bidding farewell to what was then known as Jesselton in 1963. This marks the end of the colonial days in Sabah and Jesselton has since been called Kota Kinabalu, named after the majestic Mount Kinabalu. All right, folks, that's it for this location. After this, I'll be visiting Gaia Street. So, don't go anywhere. How are you doing, Alex? Good. Are you ready for a walk? Yeah. Yeah, we are going through the Signal Hill Trail. Yes. Let's go. There's a reason why this place is called uh, Signal Hill, yeah? Yeah. I mean, during those days, uh, most of the habitats people yeah yeah they are staying in this area of the hills yeah so basically they will be signaling the boats and the ships for the merchant oh. to pass by so that's why they got the name here signal hill yeah? interesting So this is basically the bird eye view of uh, Kota Kinabalu city. Especially at night in the evening, it's very nice, you know, with the ambience of the city lights, yeah? So as you can see here, so in front of the Sabah Tourism Board building, yeah. you can see this is a the still left uh, original structure from the colonial time as well as the Francis uh, George Atkinson Tower. Mm. Yeah? If you look over there, that's the Tunku Abdul Rahman Park, uh, consists of the five islands. Okay, so here we are outside the Sabah Tourism Board building. I know this building has a lot of history and that it was built during um, the colonial times. In fact, uh, this building was one of the well-preserved uh, architecture, colonial architecture that has been uh, left after the colonial period. As right. you can see, the structure of the building is pretty uh, colony. This building, in fact, was built in 1918. Uh, initially, it was the printing office, yeah. Right. Then along the way, they changed it into the bank post, yeah, post office. And after that, in the Second World War, the Japs occupied this place as a spice bank, yeah. Mm. Then after the Second World War in 1991, around that time, so Sabah Tourism Board has taken this as the main office, as a building. Yeah? Interesting. On this side, 
once stood the Lands and Survey Office during the colonial days. In the 1990s, it burned down and was left abandoned to become a graffiti ground over the years. Until two years ago, a project called the Pillars of Sabah was started and led by Sabahan local artist Red Hong Yi, Jared Abdurrahman and Melissa Go. Other artists were also engaged to contribute their talents into turning this place into a local new landmark in the city. Lorong Dewan used to house our beloved printing shop. But now, cafe and backpackers are the new tenants. May I know, what does Australia Place mean? Uh, this place, why is named Australia Place? Because this place used to camp by the Australian Army Liberation Force right. during the Second World War. Yeah. Uh, when the Japanese occupied uh, Borneo, so the Australian was sent to here mm. to actually to aid the, the, the airline, British forces. The British forces yeah. right. shops back in the old days. Nowadays, modernization has taken over, but we can still see how some of these buildings used to look like. So we've decided to check out some of the cafes and bars. Right now, I'm at Mamacita. outside where I can feel the nice warm breeze. For your information, if you bring your own container or cup, you get a rebate. And that's just one of the things that you as a tourist can do to protect the environment. of the traditional food from various ethnicities around Sabah. I'm at Little Sulab and I cannot wait to have lunch. Alex, behind us is a clock tower. Mm. It's called the Atkinson Clock Tower. It was actually named after one of our district officers, mm. uh, which is died in 1902. No. Poor guy, okay. very young guy, 28 years old, so he died. Okay. Uh, but the clock tower is built on 1905. Yes, it was proposed by his mother, Mary Atkinson, to memory, uh, memory for his son. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually a two-faced clock tower facing the sea, this side. Here. Okay. So it serves as a navigation, as a like a like a pinpoint for the voyager, for the merchant to stop by. Nice, nice. So Ken, um, you know, with the new norm, I'm sure there's a lot of cha changes. I wonder, how do you feel about that? Actually, it's a it's, it's quite a big challenge, especially yeah. for tourist guide or for frontliner mm -hmm. because because the challenge is without any tour, of course, will be loss of the source of income. Right. And I think the most important thing is the the to upkeep the skills and the knowledge mm -hmm. of the places itself as well. So Ken, we're here at Padang Merdeka. Can you tell us why we're here? This field is actually very, very important and very, very significant for Sabahan. Okay. Because this is the this is where it's all happening. This is the moment and the day in 1963, uh, 16th of September, where Sabah declared independence from the colonial. Yeah. During the olden yeah. days, uh, 
you can see most of the British officer. Uh, you can imagine they're having the leisure time here, mm. playing cricket. They even have a clubhouse. So for Westerners, most of their you know leisure time, they would like to gather around. You know, chit chat, have so some beer. So this is the place. This is the place itself. Ah. But today it's becoming a public, uh, you know, feel for everyone. This is where we declared independence, and hence the name Padang Merdeka. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. So that's why we call this place is uh, independent feel. Apart from that, this independence feel also held uh, annually most for most of the celebration. Shantung province missed his ship while sightseeing around what was then known as Jesselton. Having nowhere to go, he sought help from Shang Chao, a family member of then Yit Chiong coffee shop's owners. He taught the bakers of the shop valuable bakery skills that they still use till this day. This brought many customers, and the shop has stood for almost a century, starting from Gaia Island and then permanently relocating here on Jalan Pantai. This bread, they've been selling this bread for almost 80 years, and it still tastes just as good. more than just one old coffee shop along the heritage area. Fortune Coffee Shop is famous for their satay. Office workers like to come here and spend their time, so that's why it's always bustling with people. When you're in Gaia Street, don't forget to drop in Jesselton Classic Boutique Hotel. Established since 1954, it still maintains the classic style but with an upgrade to modern facility and comfort. The dining lounge changed ownerships countless times, however, and has lost its originality. This is the first row of Gaia Street shop erected on September 1951 after the World War II and has lasted till today. The later shops built have taller, modern architecture. The new part of PK City are reclaimed land from the seafront. That is why we have a long stretch of city waterfront view from Likas Bay, Jesselton Point up to the modern Imago shopping mall along the Tung Fuad Stephen Road. picks up at the waterfront around sunset. There are numerous local and international food outlets that serve different types of cuisines. And this place is where locals and tourists alike come together and socialize. Very fitting as the sea itself is one of the most popular attractions in the city. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. After Malaysia's first Prime Minister, Tunku Abdul Rahman Park, or TARP, has long been a haven of peace and tranquility. The five islands protect the natural vegetation, animals, and the underwater garden of coral reefs. TARP encompasses the five islands, Gaya, Sapi, Mamutik, Manukan, and Suluk. The Marine Nature Park is only 20 minutes away from the city. 
and is a popular location for activities like diving, snorkeling, sunbathing, barbecuing, windsurfing, and parasailing. I'm meeting up with Terence Lim today, the executive director of Stop Fish Bombing Malaysia. He was one of the co-founders and has been a member of its international board of directors since 2015. And I'm interested to know more about this organization and also about fish bombing itself. So let's go. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? Good, good. It's yeah. nice meeting you. Yeah, come have a seat. <laughs> I wonder, how does your organization relate to the tourism in the state? Since tourism is the second uh, most highest earning revenue for the state of Sabah, mm. it is very important that the environment in Tungga Rangan Park is protected. Well, the marine environment here, especially the marine environment here in Tungo Ultramon Park, is a very fragile environment. It can be damaged very easily, mm. uh, especially when a fish bomber throw a bomb into the water. It will damage the, uh, the coral, the reef, and even the marine life, the fishes around it, mm. very, very easily. So our technology or our equipment and our sensors that, that are here uh, helps to protect the environment, to ensure that uh, the environment is protected so that we can continue getting more visitors visiting to Tungaraman Park. Mm. Mm. I wonder if I can see the devices. Actually, we have one at the end of the jetty. Let's go see them. You can see up there, that's uh, one of our sensors in a box. The reason why it's up there because we keep it away from the public and the whole fishermen because they do come and damage it. Oh. So if you look at the cable that's coming down, if you follow me, the cable goes all the way out here to this pillar outer pillar and it goes all the way down to about four meters of water, underwater. Oh. And it's there listening into the uh, any fish blasting activities. I have an app that mm. actually shows me real time on the on the location of the device and what it's detecting. So if you can see that uh, it's there, uh, you can see that it's in orange and that's showing where the device is mm -hmm. and also the information that is provided underneath here that's showing that it's healthy, it's listening in and if there is a blast, what will happen is that a, sick, a message will come to my phone oh. and will inform me of a blast. Oh, okay. and Plus, it's also, oh, I can also access the audio of the blast. So I can hear if the detection is a real blast or something else. Technology is really... <sighs> A work of wonder. Exactly. So this is the way. This is why we're using technology to help the, to protect the environment. And mm -hmm. this information we relay it to Sabah Park, and they can use the information to to go out and and protect the environment. That's great. Mm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next location. So in the month of May this year, five individual sea turtles successfully laid their eggs on this island. Imagine that, five sea turtles. So the eggs were brought from the beach to the turtle hatchery here, and all of them hatched successfully, and they were brought back to the sea. And I mean, honestly, let's just hope that the mother sea turtles had a good time here and would come back again next time. I have a chance to meet Sabah Park Chief Ranger, Mr. Muhammad Alif, who will show me some of the main attractions in Manukan Island. The island indeed is beautiful, serene, alive with ocean habitat, thriving. All the things that you could wish for on an island. The designs of this building look very nice. Yeah, it's all built from natural material, timber. This property here is actually run and managed by Sutra Century Resort. Mm. And by the way, in the park on the other island called Gaya Island, there's another three more properties, five-star properties uh, on the island. Sabah Art Gallery, located close to the city center. Prominent Sabahan artists like Bayu Tomo, Yi Ilan, Professor Awang Damit, and Bron Galimam have exhibited their works of art here. I've decided to visit because I really want to see the artworks created by our own local talents. Let's go in. 
The design of the building in itself is a work of art. The inspiration behind it comes from our own traditional baskets called basung. This is where tourists can come and connect to the wonders and mystery of Sabahan patterns, motives, and creativity. That's it for Sabah Art Gallery. Let's go to the next location. Kota Kinabalu Wetland is a unique mangrove forest as it is situated within the city. It plays a major role as flood retention to hold heavy rainfalls and preventing flooding. It is the breeding ground to many of the ocean's young. I'm here today because I'm excited to learn more. So, let's go. I'm so happy to see you. My name yeah. is Alex. My name is Azmil. Um, welcome to Kota Kinabalu Wetland on South Side. And let's go to the wetlands. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm curious to know, mm -hmm. what are the functions of wetlands? So there are many functions of wetlands actually. Mm -hmm. But the main function is that it mitigates floods. Mm. And also it acts as a breeding ground for fishes, small fishes, mm. sharks, turtles, mm -hmm. you know. And also it mitigates the climate change because the mangrove trees, they can absorb up to five times of carbon oh. compared to other trees. Nice. Oh, I see a bird there. Yeah, it's it's an egret. Here we have few species of egrets. Uh -huh. So that one is actually a small egret. We have the great egret. Uh -huh. and also, we have intermediate egret. You raise them? No, they are all from everywhere. This is where locals come for recreation, jogging, exercising, and various other activities by the sea. There are tracks for joggers and cyclers, which explains why this place is popular for those activities. This is one of the efforts in the Sustainable City Project taken up by the City Council. The Sustainable City Project encompasses the entire coastline starting from the heart of the city right up the Mangatal District. A truly commendable effort. for its beautiful sunset views. Tanjung Aru Beach is easily one of the best beaches you can come to. This is where tourists go to witness one of the most iconic sunset views in the world. Its tranquil environment help one to relax. And I simply must visit. Keke is a mix of old and new. The conservation efforts have been taken up by the people and the city council. Even Tanjung Aru is part of the Sustainable City Project. Kota Kinabalu episode ends here, but be sure to stay tuned so we can meet again in the next episode.